This week I'm back to working on the Tower of Power with these lithium iron phosphate modules. The honeymoon is over and there are some shortcomings that I'll be addressing in this video. So here we go. I have gone through a lot of charge and discharge cycles, uh, but I have not been pushing it right to the limits because there are some weaker cells in the modules. And every cycle I kind of put a piece of masking tape on here and I write down how, what the cells are doing. and. Uh, it, it's been a lot of fun, uh, but I haven't been able to seriously power some heavy loads yet because I, I've decided I want to add some thicker wires. <laughs> I have made up some thicker wires for this purpose. Uh, this is 10 gauge wire with some fuse holders and we're going to be installing some of these today. It's going to be a tedious project. I have to take off all the copper bars, all the fuses. I'll have to build a shelf that lines up with each module, pull it out, so I can get access to all of the cell tabs on the sides of the module. That's where I'll install all these fuse holders and wires and push it back in. Uh, and that way I can parallel the individual cells together. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Hopefully when that happens, the weaker cells can share their load with the stronger cells and vice versa. So we're averaging out. What I have found is that when I go to the extremes of high or the extremes of low on the state of charge curve, the weaker cells wind up diving off before the stronger ones. But I found that, you know, I don't want to limit the pack to just the weakest cell. If I parallel up the cells, I should be able to get a few more amp hours out of this thing. And, you know, I'm just, I want to get that. I want to get those few more amp hours out of it. So I was looking at this trying to figure out how I'm going to run my wires uh, out of the case. You know, should I bring them all to the front maybe? Should I, how should I run them out of the case? I think what I'll do is take two of these plastic covers that snap over here and I'm going to drill a hole large enough right in the middle of two of them for these wires to exit. All right. Well, I have some holes drilled out in these guys. These are the fuse holders I'll be using. Inside I already have the fuses and on the end I have some little ring terminals that are crimped on right there. So the idea will be to take one of these covers, I have to fish two of the wires through and I'm going to rivet these on the inside. So let's do that. I'm using these little copper rivets. Here's the first cell group that we need to rivet to. So I'm going to put this right over here and try to line it up. Can you see that? Rivet comes out the back side, but there's enough room. Then as I squeeze, that pops off. Now we have that riveted on. So now we'll just put another rivet in the gun. There you go. And on the bottom, I can snap that. Hopefully, this bottom, I can snap it in place. If I get it right, yep, there's the right position. And now the top, I can go ahead and snap it in. And the two just come out through that hole. And notice, I've already taped off all the ends, so I'm not going to short these out. The white wires facing out, because these are shorter, so I cut the red wires longer. So the red wires are about three and a half feet long and the white wires are two feet long. And that was just because I didn't want to waste wire where I didn't need to. So all the red ones I'll be putting on the wall side because I've got to actually snake them from the back of the battery out to the front where I can then get access to them and splice them all together. I just dragged the second battery out of the shelf and just started taking off some of the covers here but realized that I forgot a crucial step. I'm changing the orientation of these. 
this battery is upside down because it was flipped. So I need to flip this back right side up uh, before I wire it. <laughs> there we go. Now it has the same orientation as the one underneath. And take off this cover. And now the same plastic covers and the same wiring and everything's going to uh, be identical to the one be beneath it, and that's where everything's getting paralleled up. Now I can pull this one out. This one needs to be flipped. Now it's the same as all the other ones. Let's see. There we go. There we go. You can see the wires come through there and do that with this one and then I fill in all the, the solid covers that don't have the hole drilled in them. All the modules are now paralleled and series together and I'm currently working on wiring the cells together. So the main positive and negative come down here and all the positives are now on the bottom four modules with their fuses. That's just some temporary tape on that one. I'm going to take that off. Now over here on the right, this 4-aught wire is the main connection that series is the uh, bottom four 24-volt modules and series them up to the top four modules. Now originally, I used these bus bars from a Smart for Two electric car. They're tin-plated copper bars with a uh, paint on them. I didn't have any more of them and I didn't want to wait for getting some big copper bars, which would be awesome. So I just uh, used this three-quarter inch copper pipe. And I know that's not correct. In the future, I might go and I might buy some new copper bars to do all of them together. Some nice big like three-quarter inch by quarter inch copper bars. But as of right now, this is just... A big piece of three-quarter inch. It's type L, so it's actually thick, uh, thick wall. I've already done these connections over here. 
uh, for paralleling those cells and I'm about to start over on this side so we can see the bottom four wires come out like that and so I'm going to parallel these ones up so let's do that these crimp sleeves are bigger than the last ones I used these say 14-8 on them and so they can be used up to 8 gauge wire so I'm going to use some of these I can visually look at the holes where these wires are coming out of the battery and I can see that these four wires are all the rearmost cell so these are going to be parallel together but I'm going to confirm that before I go and cut the ends off see I taped all the ends and I'm going to check these with my multimeter by just piercing the insulation confirm it and then if we're good to go then I'll cut and strip the ends and then splice them together Elena's giving me a hand on these so let's confirm these voltages here so what I'm going to do is just pierce the insulation on them and confirm that they're all the same alright so 23 23 23 so they're all 23 so they're all correct so now I can go ahead and uh, cut and strip these and splice them together alright so we have our our four cells and no sparks when we put them together, haha. <laughs> uh, crimp sleeve, put the crimp sleeve on here. There we go. And now my lineman pliers have a little dimple built into them, and that's all I'm using. So now we have a dimple in there. So now all those cells are parallel together and that's not going to short out on anything. I just finished throwing everything back together. So we have all of our wires on the sides, paralleling all the cells. I did throw this wiring harness back up, but I'll be taking this down. I just wanted to test it. This is the uh, battery management system, the BMS. Uh, this is a Chargery brand. If we. Right now it looks like the cells are within 35 millivolts of 19 amps. Now what I want to do is check that it's being evenly divided among all four. So not just one is taking all of the amps. So, you know, that would be if like there was a break in say one of the fuses or something uh, severe like that, then we wouldn't get any anything moving through one of the modules. So there's a module here, another module here. So if I go on this one, this is half of the 19, and it is. And then all the way down here should just be one fourth, and it is. And I did the same thing up top, and we are moving uh, evenly. All the modules are being used evenly. So that is great news. Uh, very few amps are moving across these. So... 0.2, 0 on that one. <laughs> so uh, I was going through and checking these and I haven't seen very many amps just randomly going through them. So they're doing well, paralleling the cells. By the way everybody, I really regret having done these Molex plugs. They were really quite a pain. If you do pick up some of these uh, large modules and you want to do it yourself I would just remove this Molex plug and I get some of these cheap uh, JST-XH 8S connectors with nine wires on them and you can cut them in half if they're like this or you can pick them up as pigtails and just go straight through this hole and wire to those red wires on the inside and just skip this Molex plug that way this JST connection is the same one that's used on things like this. The little, so this is kind of like the standard little plug that I'm finding on a lot of these little devices. So I wish I had just gone straight from this right through the hole and just skipped the Molex altogether. Now I did put this wiring harness back up and this is temporary. I will take this hot mess of wires down. Uh, and I'll just go straight from the Molex connector to the uh, BMS. Uh, but I'm, I just, I'm so excited to do a full capacity test. So I just threw it up there for now and, 
and that way I can charge the battery once it's charged I can discharge it do a full capacity test uh, to let everybody know because I've been asked by a lot of people and I'm interested myself in a full capacity test <laughs> so I will be removing this in the future <laughs> please bear with me uh, now the copper pipe that I used is 3 quarter inch type L uh, so I did out the math on that. It has 75.7 millimeters square of actual copper, which makes it halfway in between a 2 aught and 3 aught wire. Now the wall over here where the wires are exposed, I do need to put a cover on that, but I want to make sure that everything's working properly and then I can put some plywood or something up the side and keep my daughter's little hands out of there. <laughs> Uh, same goes for the front. Once I know that everything is done on this, uh, I can put a cover on the front. <laughs> so I am excited. We're currently charging. We're at 53 volts right now for the battery pack. Uh, once it's fully charged, I'll be able to set up the discharge. And hopefully that'll be in another video coming up here. Uh, so, hey, thank you everybody very much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out the links in the description below. Uh, that really does help out the channel. Uh, and if you want to pick up some of these batteries yourself, they're from Battery Hookup. I do have an affiliate program with them. And you can get 10% off if you use my coupon code, which is DavidPaws. Thank you very much for watching.